the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to you all. Glad to have you with us on this day as we celebrate our Christ. Let us all stand together for our call to worship, saying, Where is he who was born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. forgives all our sin 
and heals all of our diseases. Behold, God, my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yahweh, the Lord, my strength and song, he also is my salvation. Isaiah 12, 2. Good morning. Grace, mercy, and peace to each of you from God our Father and from my Savior, Jesus the Christ. It is good to see each of you this morning. Good to view each of you this morning. To those in our listening audience via KJLH and streaming and watching on YouTube and all your various devices, welcome, good morning. Thank you for setting this time to join us in worship in our virtual converse congregation. Our responsive reading, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, reading responsibly from the New King James Version. And if there is anyone present or who is listening for the very first time, if you are in Trinity Baptist Church for the first time, we welcome you and thank you for being with us this morning. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east coast, came to Jerusalem. Saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, All, but you, but you Bethlehem, Bethlehem, in the, in the land, land of Judah, Judah are not the least among the for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Jaira, our provider, he is more than enough, always enough, forever enough. Jaira, in all things, in every circumstance, I will, we will be content in every circumstance. Jaira, our provider. Gloria Patria.
worship you, O Lord. We praise you, O Lord, for you are worthy of all honor. You are worthy of all praise. It's good to see all of you out here this morning. Thank you. May God richly bless you with the sermon that pastor has prepared from his heart. May this Christmas Advent be a reminder that Jesus is not just on the December 25th, his day of birth that we celebrate, but every day is a day that we should celebrate who he is. For he has smiled on us this morning. We opened our eyes. We knew where we were and who we were. And thank God we were able to move and come to worship the morning together. We thank you for our choir. We thank you for our leadership here at Trinity. And we pray for those who are bereaving this morning. Father God, we come in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, Christ the Lord, who is the anointed one, who is our rock, our sword, our shield, who is our strong tower, who is the Christmas for all time, who is the great shepherd, who is the bread of life, the water of life, eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for your great sacrifice. We thank you, Father, for sending your Son. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for rolling the door away. We thank you, O Lord, for witnessing to us and we were able to hear the word of the Lord and respond in kind. We thank you, Lord, that you have rallied behind us we invite your Holy Spirit into this service that you would touch every man, woman, boy, and girl. May they be provoked to know you more intimately. May they be stretched to go beyond their easy faith. May they come to be obedient to their walk and their race. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you've paid the ultimate price for us that we might receive the tree of life, that we might receive eternal life. We thank you that your word has revealed unto us in Hebrews chapter 10, 36. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of the Father, you might receive the promise. We thank you, Father, that your word has revealed unto us that your promises are yea and amen, and there is no shadow or turning. There is no variation, for all things come from the Father of lights. And we thank you that your light purifies, it heals, it delivers, it breaks every yoke and removes every burden. We know there are some who are burdened here this morning. We pray that you would send your Holy Spirit, that you would touch every heart, touch every mind. We pray indeed for our leadership in the city of Los Angeles and the United States of America. We lift up both houses and we lift up our president. And we pray, O oh Lord, you'd open blind eyes and deaf ears and hardened hearts. Pray that you would break the yoke that has them bound to do their will and not your will. We ask you, O oh Lord, through these covert times, Lord, that you'd help us to be loving one another as you have loved us. Help us not to be like the world. Help us to show the world that we don't have a cancer culture in the church. Help us show the world that we are leading the way, not letting the world lead us in the way. Help us, O oh Lord, to stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so, Father, we thank you and pray you for those who have gone before us and made this day possible to worship in this edifice. We thank you for the church of Jesus Christ. We thank you for his might to keep us together as one body in Christ. As your word says unto us, that we all may come together in the unity of the faith and in the bonds of peace. We thank you, O Lord, that you will not leave us, never will, nor will you ever forsake us. We lift up our young people, Lord, are facing great challenges here in our communities and in our schools. We pray for their safety and we pray for their peace and understanding through these turbulent times. For your word has revealed unto us, O Lord, that in the end times, many will fall away from the faith and follow all kinds of doctrines of demons and devils. 
We pray you keep your hedge of protection around this body of faith, that you would keep their children and grandchildren, their nieces and nephews, and brothers and sisters and cousins safe and from all harm and danger. We thank you, Lord, that you've said unto us that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can think, imagine, or ask. We lift up our past as he prepares to bring the word. Pray that you will strengthen his resolve. We pray that you let him down in the deep treasures of your word, that we will hear a word from the Lord. Hide him behind the cross and let Christ speak through his mouth. And let the words be heard and prepare the hearts and minds of the people to hear what thus saith the Lord that we all may come together as one body in Christ, in the unity of the faith, and in the bonds of peace. May this Christmas season be a good one for each and every one of us and our families, and as some of us are struggling because of our loved ones have gone on, and it may be the first time they celebrate Christmas without them, we pray for your peace, and we pray for your comfort, and we pray for your understanding to be upon each and every one. Bless each auxiliary of this church, and. Bless our deacon board and our deaconess board, our office staff, and our musicians, and our choirs. Through Christ our Savior and Lord, we ask it all and for his sake. Let us all say amen.
your program. We have the scripture and the message outline we're going to follow very closely this morning. Our scripture comes from the book of Isaiah. We actually have uh, four passages, four different places that we're going to be reading scriptures. There's seven verses all together. The first scripture is from Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. The second scripture is from Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. The third scripture is our main text, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And then finally, Psalm 30, verses 11 and 12. I'm going to read all seven of those verses in your hearing now, beginning at Isaiah 60, verse 1. And it reads, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And he, Moses, said, Please show me your glory. And there were shepherds, uh, sheep herders, camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angel stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. We found in Psalm 30, verses 11 and 12. You have turned me, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. Oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. So on this third Sunday in Advent, I want to speak to you from the promised glory of Advent, which is Jesus the Christ, the promised glory of Advent. Uh, these passages of scripture uh, point us to, uh, each one points us to the glory that God has. And so I thought I'd try to lift up during this Advent season of the glory of God. And uh, Isaiah uh, gives us some uh, ideas of what should happen when we experience the glory of God. So I'm going to start with uh, this verse in Isaiah. And Isaiah says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Isaiah lets us know, he declares, and this is the first part of your outline, Isaiah declares, arise, shine, your light has come. Isaiah says, when you understand that Christmas is about the glory of God, it ought to, it ought to do something to you physically. It ought to make you arise. You, you need to stand up. You need to, you need to own it. You need to recognize that God is saying, I, I, I can't just sit down. I can't just be at ease. I have to arise because the glory of God is come. The glory of God is in our lives. And because the glory of God is in our lives, it makes us move. It makes us get up out of where we were and move to a different place. So Isaiah says, arise and shine. The glory of the Lord, the light of Christ has risen in you. And when you start to have the glory of God in you, it will make you arise. It, it, will, it will raise you up. Uh, it, it will lift you. Uh, that's, that's what God's glory does. Uh, you, you, you will not be able to remain the same because of the glory of God. And so Isaiah, he starts off by saying, Arise, shine, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is a personal thing that is in each individual that will accept God as their Savior. Uh, that's why we need Jesus the Christ. He is God in the flesh. It is the glory of God made flesh. Uh, theologians call it the incarnation. Uh, God uh, put all of his glory right into the very presence and very, the very person of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus says in John, the 14th chapter, Jesus says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You, 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 you've seen the glory of God. That raises this question uh, in Exodus 33, 18. I have it printed there in your outline. It says, and Moses said, please show me your glory. Uh, Moses didn't get to see the glory of God in his fullness, uh, not like those disciples did, not like you and I do, because the glory of God is revealed in Jesus the Christ. 
And because he has revealed himself to you and to I, we get an opportunity to, to behold his glory. His glory is different from the glory that men have. We, we have glory by having parades. In fact, the Dodgers, when they won the World Series uh, the year before last, they were disappointed because they weren't able to have a parade. Couldn't have the parade because of the pandemic uh, restrictions and we didn't want people getting sick at a parade, and so we didn't have one. And then the, the hope was that the uh, virus would go down enough where we could have it, but by the time before we knew it, the next World Series had come, and the Dodgers wasn't in that one. I think it was Atlanta, wasn't it? Yeah, so it's, the, the, the parade was down in Atlanta. Uh, I, I thought about calling the Dodgers and telling them to go down there, but I said, no, I didn't. Uh, but we, we, like to, we like to have parades and celebrations, but God, God does his glory differently. God, God's glory is in his humility. He was born in a stable in a little town called Bethlehem. And the Bible tells us, in fact, let me, when we look in on it right here, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, it says there were shepherds, there were sheep herders, they were camping out in the night. And while they were out there camping in their neighborhood, uh, the scripture says here, it was the night watch. And the Bible says, suddenly God's angel stood and God's glory blazed around them. God's glory comes and it just blazed all around them. And they were terrified. When, when you start to really understand that God really is in your life, the first reaction is it scares you. What, is, what does God want with me? He, 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 he makes himself known to us, and the impact on that is, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to behave with this. How, do, how does a, a temporary person behave with eternal life? That, that this, this eternity is visited upon us and it, and it blazes itself so in such a way that we don't really know what to do with it. It, it, it can become frightening. And so they were, the scripture says they were terrified. Then the angel says, don't be afraid because I'm here. God has sent his glory to announce something to us. When you start to get a sense of the glory of God, it's never just for you. It is God making an announcement. God is saying something with his glory. God speaks through his glory. And it says, now this is what the announcement is going to be, verse 10. It's an announce a great and joyful event. It's going to say something that's going to be for the whole world. It's going to, it's going to have a worldwide impact. And that's what the glory of God does. God Almighty has an impact on the entire world. He withdraws our sin out of the world by his own glory. He withdraws sin out of you and I by his own glory. And as we manifest the glory of God, we then diminish the flesh that we have. It starts to diminish so that we don't become that a stumbling block that gets in the way of God's glory. We become instruments of his glory. When, when you and I uh, fight against sin and uh, make ourselves accountable to God, uh, we then allow the glory of God to shine in our lives. The glory of God has come. Now it's up to you and I whether we will receive it. Uh, John chapter 1, I think it's verse 12, says that for as many as received him, he gave them the right to become children of God. He, and he says, and those persons will be full of grace and truth. When you're full of grace and truth, you are displaying the glory of who God is. God wants to share with you and I his glory. So these angels, they announce that this glory of God is coming in the flesh. I'm going to speak to you more about that next week, but I want you to hear this great announcement. Uh, it, is a, it is a great announcement. It is a joyful event, and it's for the whole world. That means that you and I, we need to tell somebody. Uh, that, that's why we're having our evangelism next week. 
We want to tell the whole world. We want, we want to tell everybody in our community. We want them to know that we, we, got, we got something to announce, and it is the glory of God. And then God wants that glory of God to be in your everyday life. And uh, just the, the normal things that you do every day. God wants his glory to be manifest in how you speak to people, how you treat people, uh, how, how you uh, acknowledge others. What, you, what do you do with who you are? How, how do you handle your sexuality? How do you handle your temperament? How do you handle your, your, uh, your, your life situation? God, God wants to get glory out of who you are. What do you do with your money? God wants to get glory out of every aspect of your life. And so we, we have this opportunity now to let God arise and let him shine in our lives. That's what the prophet Isaiah says, arise and shine. Uh, do, do that with your, with your uh, loved ones. Do, do that with people that are, are against you. Do that with your neighbors. Do that with your community. Do, do, do that. Arise and shine. The light of Christ is in you. The glory of God lives in you. That, that is to make us at our best. When, I, when I'm aware of and cognizant of the fact that I got the living God in me, it makes me want to be my very best. And this is what Isaiah is saying to us. Let, let, it, let it arise and shine. This angel announces to us that God's got a joyful event. He's, he's going to make the whole world glad. If the world will receive him, he'll make the whole world glad. Well, let me share the last thing I want to lift up today uh, is from uh, the book of Psalms, Psalms 30, verses 11 and 12. Uh, this is what David uh, shares with us after he has experienced the glory of God. This is what he says. He says, you turn for me in my mourning my grieving into dancing. That, that's what God does. He takes a, a bad situation that we've encountered and he, he makes it a joyful one. He turns it around. Uh, God is a turnaround specialist. And so if you find yourself mourning, you find yourself feeling down, you find yourself feeling, as we talked about last week, feeling gloomy, uh, then we got this God who is a specialist in turning that around. And so David says, you turn my mourning into dancing. And then he says, you put off my sackcloth, which is a grieving clothes, and you clothe me with gladness. God has uh, turned this mourning into dancing. Uh, do, uh, do, do you guys know what dancing is? Uh, uh, dancing means you're not sitting still like you're doing right now. Uh, da dancing means uh, you got to move. Uh, Sandra and I had our grandson over, and he started, for, not even four years old yet, uh, before next month, but he started dancing. And I was sitting there watching him. And then he says, come on, Grandpa. <laughs> and I, I looked at her, I just pointed to Sandra, and I said, you know, get her. She, she thinks she can dance, so get, 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 get her. And she started dancing. So him and her were dancing, and then he kept looking at me, pointing the finger for me to get up. And finally, I did start tapping my foot. I, yeah, I, if, if, if you can't dance, at least tap your foot. You know, you, 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 you want to move something. You, 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 don't, you don't just stay there. You don't just stand still. You don't just sit still when, when you're dancing. You, you move. Somebody say move. At least your mouth can move. I'm glad it's up there. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you move. You do something. And this is what David said. David said, I was mourning. I was sad. I was down. I was depressed. I didn't, I didn't feel good. But God turned it around. And that's what our God does. He turns things around. I'm glad I got a God. When I start feeling down, I can start thinking of his goodness. I think of his blessings. I think of his holiness. I think of his grace. I think of his mercy. I think of how he's forgiven me of all of my sin. And I start dancing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at what he's done for me. It, it, it'll make you dance. It'll make you move. It'll make you sway. It, 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 it does something to you when you start thinking about the glory of our God. David says, I started dancing. 
And then he says, that sackcloth, that sad stuff that I had on, I took that off, and, and God clothed me with gladness. My brothers and sisters, God wants you to be glad. Glad you got a God who lives. Glad you got a God that, that loves you. Glad you got a God that, that made you by hand. You are, you are a wonderfully made because you're made by the hand of God. And so God, he wants you and I to be glad. But let me get to the last thing David says here, and I'll be finished. He says, to the end, verse 12 there, to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. My glory. This odd phrase, my glory, that David uses uh, now, some versions I've read uh, translate that my tongue. Uh, some translate it my heart. Uh, other versions translate it my soul. Uh, when I read some research on it, uh, they, theologians say that it has a reference to uh, the distinction between uh, humanity and all the other uh, animals in the animal kingdom. The distinction that humanity makes is what the Bible here calls our glory. It is that ability to communicate. It is that which God gave us that he didn't give to others. We can communicate with each other. We can communicate with animals. We can communicate with plants. We, we communicate uh, in ways that other animals are not able to communicate. And that is what David is referencing when he says, my glory. So he says, my glory, my ability to communicate, he says, it then makes me sing praise to you, O Lord. If, if, if I'm going to use what God has given me, the skill, the talent, the ability God has given me, uh, the first thing I need to do with it is let it praise my God. I need to take the in inherent abilities, the, the, uh, the, the skills and the talent and just the very core of who I am. And I, use, I need to use that to praise God. David says, I'm not only going to just use it, I'm going to make it sing praise. I'm going to use my glory, what's in me, and I'm going to use it to sing praise to my God. Whatever God has gifted me with, whatever I have on the inside, David says, that's my glory, and I'm going to use that I may sing praise to the God I serve, to the God I love. Let whatever you have, let it sing praise to our God. Offer it to God as a gift. David said, it's yours, but if it really is yours, you ought to give thanks to the one who gave it to you, and you give thanks to him by singing praise to his name. Sing praise to the God who blessed you to, who, to be whoever you are. And, God, and thank God, I do this every day, I thank God he's not finished with me yet. And after I thank God he's not finished with me, then I thank God he's not finished with you yet. You should have said amen right there. That's a, uh, he, he's, not, he's not finished with us yet. He's still working on us. He's still sharing his glory, and his glory is still making us better. The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we will be like him. We, we, we have his magnificence. We have his glory. We have his essence. We have who he has made us at the very end, at the very end of what he called us to be. At the end, we'll see ourselves and we'll be a reflection of who Christ is. That, that's, what, that's what God is moving us. That's why he's working us toward. He's making you and I where we'll be a reflection of who he is. He is glory in its essence. The glory of God alive in us. Well, let me get to the last thing and I'll be finished. The, the, the last thing uh, God has greatness in you and I. The angel said this here, verse 10 of Luke chapter 2. The angel said, don't be afraid. I am here to announce a great and joyful event. God has something great he wants to announce to you he wants to do in your life. God has greatness for us. 
the greatness has to do with uh, being able to let the glory that God has uh, shine in us and through us. And uh, God's glory, it, it doesn't shine when we have our lives uh, full of sin. When our lives are have, uh, is, uh, uh, in the lowlands, uh, they, they are full of muck and mire. They're full of uh, sensuality and, and full of uh, carnality and full of uh, uh, malice and prejudice and hate. Uh, our, our lives, uh, they become muddy and they become dark. They become a place where God's light cannot shine through. And God says, I'm going to make this announcement. I'm going to do something great. The great thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send somebody that will be able to clean up your life. Make your life where it will be crystal clear. And when God shines his light in it, it will not only will it bless you, the light will go through you and bless somebody else. That, 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 that's God's great announcement. That's what Advent is all about. We got a Christ that's coming. We got a Christ that has been born in Bethlehem, and that Christ is the Savior of the whole world. He can save your marriage. He can save your family. He can save your job. He can save your health. He can save anything and everything. All we got to do is put it in the hands of our God. Our God is able to turn our entire world around. In fact, the angel says it. He says, this, is, uh, this, is for, uh, this event is for, meant for everybody worldwide. It's, it's, it's meant for you personally and individually, but it also is meant for everybody else in the whole world. And so we need, to, we need to make sure that we have a right relationship, a good relationship with our God, not only for us, but for everybody else. When you live right, it has an impact on everybody else. It blesses. God has, he's looking for an example in this 21st century. He's looking for one good man, one good woman, one, one good teenager, one good child, one good young adult, one, one good senior citizen. God, God is looking for just one somebody that will be willing to let the light of Christ shine in their lives. And he's asking me, he's asking you, will you be that one? I chose this uh, Isaiah verse when he says, arise and shine, because I also remember Isaiah said in chapter 6, this is chapter 60 now, but in chapter 6, Isaiah says, here am I, send me. God said, I, I need somebody to go, I need to get this message out, and, and, and God asked the question, who will go? And I love reading it over and over again, Isaiah says, uh, first thing he says is, I'm, I'm unclean, and my mouth isn't right. Boy, I thought God was speaking directly to me. Yeah. I, I had a, a horrible mouth. Uh, just, who do you know practice cursing in front of a mirror? Uh, it was just a horrible mouth. But, but, but God came into that horrible mouth. And he said, I, I, I want you to use it for my good. And I tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the way you think. I'm going to change what's going on in your mind and in your heart. I'm going to change your life, but then I want you to speak for me. And like Isaiah, I was, I was, I was convinced that the right thing to say was, here am I, send me. And, the, and when you read that in Isaiah, the very first thing God touches on Isaiah is not his heart, it's not his mind. The Bible says the first thing God touched was his mouth. Turned his mouth. I'm so glad God turned my mouth. I'm so glad that I got a God who says, I'm going to take all the, the wrongness that was in your mouth and I'm going to turn it around and make it right. That, that's why I identify with what David said. David said, he'll, he'll, he'll take your mourning, your grieving, and what's wrong with you, and he'll make it, he'll turn it into dancing. He'll turn your sadness into gladness because you turn towards him. My hope and prayer this Christmas is that God would touch you, touch your mouth, so that you'll speak his, his blessings, that he'll touch your body, that you will arise and shine, 
that he would touch your finances, where you would be willing to give to the Lord, especially what he's already owe, what you already owe him. That's the tithe. That you're willing to give to him. God, let, let, I pray God will touch you, touch your life. That he touch your family. That your family will be a better family. And it's always good when your family is better because you're in it. When your family would be better if you were not in it, then you need to make some changes in your life so that family will be better because you are in it. Our God can turn things around. He wants to do some great things in our lives. I'm going to stop right there. Will you stand with me? We're going to offer a closing prayer. Gracious God, we ask now that you would do great things. The life of our Trinity family, the life of those that are listening on the radio and on the internet, uh, we pray that you would do great things. And let that greatness start with each one of us. Uh, let it start with every listener. Let it start with me. Pray that you would forgive me, forgive my brothers and sisters, forgive us. Forgive us of our sin. Help us now to let the light of Christ, the glory of our God, let it shine in our lives. We ask these and all the blessings. In the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus our Christ, for his sake we pray. Amen. Blessings to you all. Enjoy your morning. Summer.